This week on Field Sports Africa, we join up with Dr. Kevin Robinson, darting Wild Rhino and giving them the notch. Plus, we talk to Clinton Fintonda about hunting the Black Death in the Limpopo province. We also join up with Richard Burns as he hunts a mighty doggable. I'm Richard Leonard and this is Field Sports Africa. Today we are in the Southern African Wildlife College's training area where we're going to dart a rhino to microchip it and to ear notch it. This is all part of a rhino monitoring program and a research project that is run by the Southern African Wildlife College. A research project like this one, run by the South African Wildlife College, plays a massive part in the tracking and monitoring of rhinos here in South Africa. This helps in the effort to keep these endangered animals safe and around for future generations to appreciate. We monitor the rhinos here, all rhinos look the same. And we see rhinos, you can't tell if they're a male or a female from a distance. So we mm. have a program where we, we systematically dart the rhinos and we ear notch them with a, with a coding system. So today we're going to do number 365. So when the rhino is down, we put right. microchips in his horn, we put a microchip in each ear, we take DNA samples, oh, and we wake right. it up again. The state of the white rhino here in Africa is in crisis. There are an estimated 21,000 white rhinos left in the world today. There were 1,054 recorded rhinos poached in 2016. The rhino horn sells for between 200,000 and 300,000 rand per kilogram on the black market today, making this illegal trade very attractive to poachers. We, we're in a battle zone here, hey? you know, we've got rhinos being poached, we're trying very hard to stop the poaching. Yep. Yeah, we're fighting this war, hey? and, and we're definitely having some success, we, we're not winning it, but we're stemming the tide, we're slowing it down. So this whole operation now is, is part of an operation, ultimately to keep our plane in the sky and keep, keep, the fight, keep fighting the good fight. The aviation part of this operation is absolutely vital. Today we've got Richard and Jana from Wild Skies Aviation. They do our chopper flying for us in our rhino darting and research program. You've got to dart a rhino from a helicopter. You have to get in really low, you have to get in really close. So the competency of the pilot is absolutely critical and a vital part of our program. Jana is an amazing pilot, knows how to get the job done. It's just a really nice, nice operation and a nice people to be able to work with. The team is ready to go and communication just came in from the helicopter of the rhino's whereabouts. It's all systems go. I got the camera set and on record and Kevin drove the team to the location where we had a visual on the chopper and then we knew the rhinos were close by. Dr. Peter Rogers is using an Excalibur CO2 darting rifle which shoots a dart at 350 feet per second. This allows the projectile to penetrate the rhino's thick hide and deliver 80 milligrams of butorphanol into the rhino. This is enough medicine to knock out 160 men. The vet wastes no time and makes a perfect shot. Yana the pilot radios in and tells us to start our stopwatches, saying the darting of the rhino was a great success. She skillfully guided the rhino with the helicopter towards the road where we were waiting and eventually the rhino went down within 30 meters of the vehicles. Okay, once the rhino goes down a lot needs to happen, everybody's got their own job to do, everybody knows what to do. The rhino goes down, the most important thing is to stabilize his respiration and to get him into what we call a sternal recumbency position, the rhino's got to lie on his chest. Uh, you've got to get in, someone needs to support him, so yeah, he is like that. That's when then the next thing is to partially reverse him with a drug called butorphanol, which lifts his respiration rate. Once we had stabilized the animal, we got to work measuring the horns. This can be used to determine the mass of the horns. The vet gave him a unique series of ear notches, which is one of the ways to help identify him in the future. 
We then went on to a second method of identification and tracking, drilling holes in his horn to place a microchip. These microchips can be scanned and contain all the information linked to this particular rhino. Another vital part in the research is taking DNA samples from the animal. Hair, blood, parts of the ears and horn are collected for the lab team to analyze. This gives the experts insight into this rhino, its genetics and well-being. Working with such a majestic animal is always a privilege for everyone involved. And the team takes a few seconds out to just appreciate the rhino before sending him back on his way. Oh, we've done this many times before. We were a well oiled machine. Everybody knows what to do. Everybody's got their job to do and it all went fantastically well today. Well done to everybody, pilots and vet included. And now we're off to the Lampopo province to meet up with Clinton Frontonda and Richard Burns as they hunt a mighty dog ball. Yeah, buffalo hunting for me is uh, one of the exciting, most exciting animals to hunt on the African continent. It's action-packed all the way. It's highs, it's lows all the time. It's the big calibers we use to hunt these, these amazing beasts. The excitement, the adrenaline, the physical work that goes into hunting buffalo on the African continent. Uh, you never know what you're going to get around the next corner. And yeah, the buffalo with the big body that it has, it can really take impact. They can really absorb it. And um, these calibers we use, the knocking power they have, and of course the, the romance of hunting with a double rifle is just part of Africa and the part of hunting buffalo. So, you know, minimum caliber 375, but uh, when you move up in the ranks, we use a 470, a 500s, the 577s. Um, it's fun rifles to shoot. Um, it's classic and um, it's, it's, it's really, just the whole scenario of hunting these buffaloes with, with these big calibers is just to just get your blood flowing and get, gets everything in your body tingling it. It's not just about the big caliber, it's about the bullet you use, you know. We have two different types of uh, bullets that we use for hunting buffalo. One is a soft bullet, um, you know, that's more in the scenario of when you're not in thick brush, when you know you can get an open shot and you know you can get penetration. But when you're hunting in the real thick brush with buffalo, we like using a, a solid bullet, which, you know, when, if it does have to go through a branch or through a small tree or something, you can still get the penetration you need with the solid. Hunting the Greater Balepa area is, uh, is a wonderful place to hunt. Um, it's, not, it's not the typical Southern African game farm where you go and you've got 3,000 hectares that you're hunting. We've got 26,000 hectares that, that, that's free roaming. The animals can really go wherever they want to go and it makes it a tough, exciting hunt to hunt a Balepa tribe conservation. The terrain that, that we hunt in the Balepa Nature Reserve is, you know, there's, there's thick bush, there's Mupani felt, there's um, plains, um, there's hills. So, you know, that, that's from, from, from a hunter's point of view, it's a pretty challenging hunt. And you get, like I say, from bush to plains, to open areas, to mountains, and it's really, really challenging. It's appealing for international and local hunters to come and hunt in the Limpopo. The reason of being is the vastity of different animals you find in the area. You know, it's, it's so vast, it's, it's from dikas, tiembak, to elephants, you know, so you've got quite a big, broad spectrum of species you can hunt in the Limpopo. When Richard phoned us up and he said he was interested in hunting buffalo with us in the Greater Balepe Nature Reserve, my adrenaline started pumping and I, I just knew that this was going to be an exciting hunt for us to do. We do a lot of walking and stalking and, and, and that is the beauty of hunting buffalo is you never know what's around the next corner. You know you're on the tracks, you know you've got this, this, this whole scenario set up in your mind, but you, you really got to know what you're doing because usually it ends up in a very close encounter, so you got to be alert at all times. Oh, 
all of a sudden we stopped at this watering hole. Trackers were excited, they went to the watering hole, started surrounding it, and all of a sudden, there it was, our first track. Yeah, it's not for us here. When you find tracks like this, you do not hesitate. We got our guns, we packed our bags to the shooting sticks, and we started following the buffaloes. To follow these tracks of these buffaloes, with the area that we hunt them in, there's a lot of sandy areas, there's a lot of grass areas. Some areas it is more difficult, but most of it, we can see which way the buffaloes were going. It wasn't half an hour into our hunt when we picked up the first fresh sign of the buffaloes. Everybody's tension rise to the roof and we were just all excited on getting closer, as close as we can get. The buffalo passed there about five o'clock this morning. He must have been here about half past six, half past five, quarter to six, he must have passed through here. Now he got his warm, but it's not four warm. But it's fast enough to get the spur to play. We got to a section where these buffaloes have gone through and they're very large anthills that we could use to our advantage where I sent my tracker goodbye up. He looked back at us and said, you know, they're 50, they could be 50 yards away, which made our blood rise once again. Adrenaline was flowing. We were already locked and loaded. And with the advantage that we had with the anthills, I heard the ox pexes. We knew this was it. This is where we had to be. I felt the wind come up our backs and all of a sudden it just broke loose. Just a thunder of hooves running through the bush. High low, high low, high low. It's happened to me before, Richard. You hear the ox pexes you come because they lie down in the shade. Or in the sun like this. Behind an anthill. You come around the anthill, fuck your ears. So, you know, like black. Sorry, man, let's follow the tracks. The wind just wasn't on our side. Richard and I came to the decision that we got to try and run around these buffaloes and try and break the wind coming up our backs and try and have them coming from the, from the front. Yes, is my job, ma. Tara. Good boy. Yes. <laughs> when you see them coming out of the bush like that, yes. It's crazy, eh? Yeah. Yes. Got big old solid bosses. I don't think you'll get any older than this, Richard. A magnificent bull. A real dagger boy. Real old, old, heavy body. I mean, if, if I ever shoot a good buffalo for myself, that's what I'd want. You know, yes, character. Old, old warrior, this one. An old warrior, you know, workhorse, you know, he's been around the block. The wonderful boss like this and the one off horn that, that, that really shows his character and his, you know, his, his battle scars. I don't think um, mm. you could have asked for any better. Congratulations once again. Thanks for joining us on another great show. If you guys would like to come out to the Limpopo province and hunt with African hunting safaris, then please contact me at richard at fieldsportschannel.tv. We'll see you guys next time on Field Sports Africa.